guys, welcome back to Mishmas. Today we are gonna be doing something I don't think I've ever done on my channel. <laughs> I am so, so excited. This is going to be so much fun. I am doing this video in collaboration with Risa of Risa Does Makeup. She is a very dear friend of mine here in Vegas. Uh, she is like one, one out of like four friends <laughs> that I have in this city. So she's very, very dear to me. And I'm sure you all know who Risa is, but she is a makeup artist. She has wonderful videos, uh, tips and everything on her channel. She covers drugstore, she covers luxury, she covers everything. She is really just so, so knowledgeable about makeup, makeup application. To top it all off, she's absolutely gorgeous. So definitely check out her channel, check out her video. I'll have everything linked down below in my description box. And the video that she is gonna be doing is luxury makeup that I have recommended for her. And what I am doing today is drugstore makeup that she has recommended for me. So we are gonna be playing with the L'Oreal infallible tw up to 24 hour fresh wear. This is a foundation, it has SPF 25. I don't, this shade may be a little bit too deep for me, but we'll see what happens. So that's the foundation we're gonna be using. Then she recommended the Milani Conceal and Perfect Long Wear Concealer. Oh my gosh, what else? A CoverGirl highlighter, another Milani, what is this? Oh, this is a bronzing powder. This is, I think this may actually be too light for me. This is supposed to, oh no, that may work. That may work. This is number one. It's uh, number one, sunlight, silky matte bronzing powder. So we'll be playing with that. I'm just opening up all of these uh, packages. What is in here? This is, oh, uh, a Revlon uh, blush. This is in tickled pink. And apparently I ordered two of them. Okay. <laughs> And then for lips, she recommended, ooh, this sounds exciting, the Maybelline Lifter Gloss. It has hyaluronic acid in there. This packaging is really pretty. I like this nude cap. And then finally, she said, basically, get any BH Cosmetics 16 pan eyeshadow palette that has the square pans versus the round pans. Apparently the square pans are better than the round pans. So I decided to go for the Hangin' in Hawaii. These look like colors that I would really enjoy. So I'm excited to use, well, I'm excited to use all of this. I was gonna say the eyeshadow palette, but I'm excited to use all of this. Um, I have prepped my skin, we are all ready to go. So I'm gonna jump in with the L'Oreal Infallible Up to 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation. And did I tell you what shade I got? I guess this is shade, is that the shade number 445? That seems dark. Why did I get that? Anyway, the SPF in here is octanoxate and titanium dioxide. So it is a mixture of chemical and physical sunscreen. It's a little bit on the runny side. I was kind of expecting something more lotion-y. And yeah, I think this is gonna be a little bit too deep for me. I don't know why I ordered 445. That number even just sounds too, too deep for me. I should not judge until I get it on. I've got my BK Beauty 101 brush here. Yeah. It's definitely a little bit too deep, but I have a turtleneck on, so <laughs> not that big of a deal if it doesn't match my neck. This shade is actually like a good match for my forehead, which is, as we all know, like much deeper than the rest of my face. Okay, first observations. The finish is very, very skin-like. Um, not a ton of radiance, but not too matte. It looks a little matte down here. The one thing I will say though, I find this foundation uh, a little bit harder to blend than other foundations I've used. I feel like I'm really kind of working at it. Or maybe I should say it sets down a little bit more quickly than I'm used to. So I feel like um, I need to work a little bit more quickly. And if it has set down, I feel like I'm really kind of working to blend it out. So definitely a learning curve. Obviously a foundation I've never used before. So interesting, interesting. I like the coverage too, it's not too much. I wanna say it's a light medium. It's actually almost pretty much covered up this sunspot I have. I have these two like really uh, big dark ones here and this one looks pretty camouflaged. So maybe this is more of a medium coverage. Very nice. All right, so foundation is on. Let's move on to concealer. So I have this Milani Conceal and Perfect Longwear Concealer and I got this in the shade 115 Light Nude. This is probably something appropriate for my skin tone, but this foundation is a little bit too deep. So we'll see how this one works. 
I'm sure we can just blend it all in. Ooh, oh, that's fun. So it's a regular doe foot applicator and I'm just gonna use this same BK Beauty brush just because it fits right under here so perfectly. Yeah, that's, that's pretty light, that's pretty light. Let me blend that down. Really, really high coverage with this concealer for sure. And <laughs> I don't think I learned my lesson, but I think this concealer set a little bit more quickly than I thought too. It's like taking a bit for me to uh, blend it out. The texture of this concealer is a little bit thicker than what I'm used to, but the coverage is there. I wanna say it's a pretty high coverage concealer, but so far it looks really great underneath the eyes. I don't feel like it's emphasizing any of my um, dry aging skin under there, and it's not really creasing. Huh, not bad, so far so good. All right, so that was the, what was that called? The Milani Conceal and Perfect Longwear Concealer. All right, we are chugging along. So I did not get powder, although I thought I did get powder. I thought I did get powder. Maybe that's what this <laughs> snafu was. Huh, anyway, I don't think I need it necessarily. I do feel like both of these products have set down nicely. You know, they don't feel tacky on my skin. Um, they don't feel like they're gonna move or anything. And I have very dry skin, if you're unaware. I have very, very dry skin. So if I don't feel like I have to set something down, I generally won't powder my face. So let's just move on to bronzer. So I have this Milani bronzer. It's the Silky Matte Bronzing Powder in 01 Sunlight. And that should work for me. I do like the tone of it, at least in the pan. It looks very neutral. So I'm gonna use my Refer P22 brush. Actually, I think they renamed it to just 22. It kind of has a, like a, a cocoa butter. Yeah, cocoa butter scent. Hmm. I really like the tone, but I think it looks a lot warmer on my face than it does in the pan. I don't know if you guys see that, but in the pan, it looks very neutral, almost, I don't want to say cool tone. It's very neutral. It's definitely very neutral. And on my face, I feel like it looks warm. Anyway, all's well that ends well because I do really like the way it looks on my face. Okay, next up is blush, of which I have two. <laughs> so this is the Revlon uh, Powder Blush and it is in shade number 14, Tickled Pink. So here is Tickled Pink. I'm gonna use my refer number 24 brush. Ooh, that is powdery and it picked up like a lot, a lot of product. Let me... <laughs> Let me knock that off. I went in a little too hard. Hmm. Ooh, pretty. Pretty, this is like the perfect kind of like cool tone, like bubblegum pink. So this blush is definitely a lot matter uh, in finish than I'm used to. Usually after I apply blush, I can kind of step back and take a look and I see kind of like a pretty sheen, but this is really pretty flat. This is probably the flattest blush I've used in a very long time. Not really my preference, but this color is so pretty. It really is. And, oh, okay, well, <laughs> the lid just came off. Oh, does it just snap back on? Oh, okay. There we go, all fixed, all right. It's funny, I feel like I have so much on my brush because the pink is so bright. It's actually a lot easier to use. Like, it, it, looked, it looked like I had way too much pigment on my brush, but once I got it on my cheek, it's not so bad, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't feel like, maybe I do. I don't feel like I have um, super crazy clown cheeks. What a pretty color. Oh, I really like this. Tickled Pink, number 14. Okay, and then for highlight, so Risa said to get this CoverGirl True Blend Super Stunner Hyper Glow, and the color that I wanted, I think was sold out. Yeah, I think it was sold out, so I ended up getting this rose quartz color and i don't know if this this may end up being too deep but anyway let's give it a shot and oh all these things are taped shut this is very interesting Ooh, it feels really soft and silky yeah this may be too deep for me but there is a swatch of this rose quartz highlight i'm gonna use this uh, sonia g mini cheek i'm just gonna lightly dust it again in case it's like too dark i just don't want like too much of it. Yeah, I see it a little bit there. If it was just a hint lighter, 
I think it would work out well for me, but I'll just leave it back here. I'm gonna brush it over the blush a little bit. It has a really pretty glow. Let me take a closer look at it. It's nice. It's definitely a very effective highlight. I think it could be a little, a little like smoother looking. It could also be the shade on my skin tone. It just, it may not work and then it starts to fool the eye. But I like the level of shine. It's not super crazy. So I think it's great if you uh, maybe have a little bit of texture on your skin. You know, highlights that maybe just aren't as like Papau are much better for that. Like this one is kind of soft. To me, it's kind of like a mid-tone highlight. So it's definitely a little bit more subdued from like the shiniest ones I have, but it's very nice, definitely very effective as a highlight. It is really pretty. I actually like this shade as like a blush topper, like right here. It looks really, really nice over that tickled pink, pink quartz, tickled pink. All right, I'm just gonna do my brows quickly. I've got the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel. I'm just gonna throw that in. Uh, Risa did not put an eyebrow product down on my shopping list. <laughs> so I'm just gonna throw this in. All right, and now moving on to the BH Cosmetics Hanging in Hawaii 16 Color Shadow Palette. And this is what the palette looks like. Oh, it's really pretty. Although I feel like all three of these color and this one, these four look the same. Let me swatch some of these. Ooh, they feel nice. Very, they're very close. I definitely do not have a problem with that because as you guys know, I love like a metallic taupe. <laughs> and these are all kind of like shades. Well, this one, the Waikiki shade is actually a little bit more of a, a warm uh, kind of bronze, but these two are like metallic taupes, which I really love. All right, so let me start with like a matte transition shade. I'm gonna go into this Shaka shade, this one right up here. And I've got my Isom G34 brush. Oh, these shadows are pretty powdery. Nice, there is Shaka. A nice, like very subtle transition shade here. So there is Shaka applied, really nice. That blended in really beautifully, blends out beautifully. Yeah, and the color like builds up really nicely, slowly, which I like, you know? So you're not like all of a sudden like have gone overboard and you have like this dramatic smoky eye. I'm gonna put that sandy shade, that metallic <laughs> taupe shade. I can't resist. Um, so I'm gonna put that onto my lids and I've got my Isom W23 brush. And I'm gonna lay this down all over. Wow, that's pretty. I'm gonna go back to my first uh, blending brush. It's the G34 and just kind of work out the edge of that metallic shade. And then I'm gonna grab this deepest matte shade. It's called Honolulu. And I'm gonna apply a little bit of it onto like the outer corner of my eye, I've got my Sonia G Mini Booster Brush. And just gonna add just a little bit, just to add a little bit of depth there. Oh, that shade worked out really nicely. I like how that blends in. It took me a little bit to get it blended into that uh, sandy shade. But after working on it a little bit, I think it, you know, it blends in like really nicely. All right, next I'm going to take my Sony G Flat Definer brush. I'm going to use this Hula shade in my inner corner. Wow, that is super bright. Ooh, lovely. And I'm going to take my Isom uh, T05 brush. I'm going to go into Mahalo and line my eyes with that. So there's my eyeshadow done. I really like the way this look turned out. I really love this like deeper color on the outside. I don't, I don't think I did a great job making my two eyes look even though. <laughs> I think they look a little different, but maybe this one has to come up. Anyway, I like the way the shadows perform. That's the important thing. Very nice. All right, I'm just gonna curl my eyelashes. And the mascara I'm gonna use is one that I actually had. Risa did not uh, recommend one for me. And I actually got a lovely PR package from uh, Revolution Pro or, or Makeup Revolution, and they included a bunch of mascaras. So I held on to one, 
and it is the Extension Lash Lengthening Mascara, and it's got this really cute leopard print on the packaging. I just love that. It's got a plastic bristle brush. I am all for lengthening since I have like very little short, straight, stubby eyelashes. I feel like I'm not getting a lot of product on my lashes. So I'm not a mascara expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't know. I don't, this one is definitely not impressing me in any way. I don't feel like I'm just like getting any product on my lashes. It's taking like a little bit just for me to kind of see the mascara. I do like that it doesn't clump. I really don't like clumpy mascara. It does like kind of separate and lengthen, but it's not really holding my curl too much. Okay, and lastly, uh, Risa suggested I get this Maybelline Lifter Gloss, and of course I just ordered the nude. This is shade number eight, Stone. And this has hyaluronic acid in there, which I always love. Oh, it has like a really big doe foot applicator. This smells like cocoa butter too. I was expecting something like birthday cake or whatever. No, this kind of, well, yeah, it kind of smells like cocoa butter with like a little bit of fruitiness in there. I have to say, I have tried a couple of drugstore lip products and they've looked nice and they've worn well, but it's the smell, generally the smell really, really turns me off. And this one, I mean, I, I think I can stand it, but it's definitely not my favorite. It smells very synthetic, but it is very pretty, very, very pretty. And I think I did well with the color. I really like the stone color. Well, here is my final look using drugstore makeup. I really like the eyeshadow palette, I have to say. I think that is probably the one thing I like the most. The foundation, I feel like, and I said this about other foundations, and of course I can't remember which ones, but you know, it's it's nice. I, I can't really put my finger on anything horrible, but I just don't think it's doing anything for my skin. And I think it's because I have very dry skin, so I need a little, a little something, a little radiance or something going on. Like all this is doing is just kind of evening out my skin tone, but I need a little bit more. With dry skin at my age, I need a little bit more like filtering and softening and maybe just like a little bit of like a radiance to it. But if you don't have dry skin and you just want something that's like on the matter side, you would probably like this uh, foundation. And this blush color is really pretty. I just wish it wasn't quite as matte as it was. Um, the bronzer I thought was really lovely. I just think it kind of warmed up on my skin. I just don't think it looked quite as cool as it does in the pan. Uh, but on the skin, I think it looks beautiful. This highlight is very nice. I think it looks great over the blush. Yeah, everything is, yeah, everything is a thumbs up. Well, a big thank you to Risa for like putting me on the right track. It's so funny, we'll, we'll talk makeup or something and I get so, so overwhelmed at the drugstore. So when we were talking about this video idea, I was like, you have to give me a list because I cannot just walk into a Walgreens or a Walmart or a Target and pick out the makeup because it's it's like it's so much like hanging up there. I, I just never know where to start. So a huge thank you, Teresa, for pointing me in the right direction. I think my look came out pretty good. Don't forget to head on over to Teresa's channel. I'll have it linked down below in my description box. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I will see you in tomorrow's Mishmas video.